Welcome back. It's time for the round table and those to cold temperatures outside last week were a sharp contrast to the hot tempers flaring in Washington right now. Big fights are breaking out on issues impacting the economy and business, most notably Obamacare and immigration. So with the GOP and president squaring off, we thought we'd jump into the fray with two regulars who enjoy stirring the pot. Plus, one of them feels a little vindicated this week that his call for the Pentagon to work more closely with innovators is getting a big push this week from the Secretary of Defense. Joining us today, looking somewhat vindicated, Jonathan Aberman of Amplifier Ventures, and the man often vindicated by his ability to gauge the economy, Peter Marisi. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks. So, Jonathan, I got to start with you because you even founded this organization, Tandem NSI, calling for Pentagon and innovators to work more closely together. Now the Secretary of Defense is rolling out a whole program to do just that. I'd like to take credit for that, but I can't. But what I can take credit for, like Peter, is, is we look at trends. The United States is in the middle of a real need for a national security innovation from new places. The Pentagon's acknowledging that. It's a big deal. It's going to create a lot of opportunity. Our big challenge for this region here in Washington, D.C., is that he made the speech, announced this initiative in Silicon Valley. Making the point that that's where they see innovation, not here in our region. And that's what Tandem NSI is about, and that's the message that we're trying to spread. We have more software engineers here than there are in Silicon Valley. We need to make sure the Pentagon understands that non-traditional innovation happens here in Northern Virginia, suburban Maryland, D.C., every day. Peter, bigger picture, the Pentagon says that they're frustrated with some of their bigger contractors who are plowing more money into stock dividends and things like that then research and development they say they haven't laid out the details but they say they may reward companies that plow more money into R&D and it may be the smaller guys the pluckier guys who win yeah defense contracting in the United States the defense strategy overall is due for a reset we're going to be rethinking our force structures in terms of getting more out of what we have to deal with you know China Russia employing lots right. of big resources and the trick to that as it always has been in the past is to leverage the innovation from the private sector so you're not paying for everything you use because it's being developed for two purposes mm -hmm. that's right Jonathan though explain this to me as one of the uh, comments on the Wall Street Journal writing about this said hey we have a whole agency that already exists for that DARPA DARPA was created to make sure now granted it was in the 1950s right. but so that we would be ahead on research technology innovation what's wrong with DARPA DARPA is wonderful as are the other agencies and Tandem NSI is working with people in DARPA. DARPA's business is to find innovation. What we're talking about is that these days, innovation is much more democratized. It happens in garages. It happens in small groups. It's very rapid, and we need to get access to those people. Also, well, DARPA is about what we call pre-competitive research. That is the stage between research and development, and when you actually create a product, there are lots of people out there creating products that could easily be adapted to the systems requirements of the military, give us much more bang for the dollar. Absolutely. But they're spread all over over the country. They're not just in the Silicon Valley. They're not just here. And right. a lot of them but don't want to sell to the Pentagon. Well, you've got to learn to be a better customer if yeah, you want exactly. people to work for you. That's a big issue. Oh, a big issue we could devote an hour, a day, a week to. So and let's turn will. quickly to immigration. The president uh, ruffled a lot of feathers with Republicans by saying, if you won't pass a bill, I'll act independently. Peter, they say, we've got a bill. It's just not the one you want. That's right. And the Congress is entitled to pass the bill that it wants. And the president has to decide whether he's going to accept or reject it. The reality is the Republicans are in a box. This is not an impeachable crime that he's committed, but he certainly has done something extra constitutional. However, it's going to be very difficult for the Republicans to sue him because who's been harmed? Who in the Republican leadership has been harmed? Well, let's set aside that lawsuit for now because we've got a lawsuit uh, pending on Obamacare. But, Jonathan, Peter, just talk quickly to the fact that businesses embrace what the president's doing on immigration, but they say you didn't go far enough. You didn't focus enough on the kind of workers we need. Immigration is a hot mess, and, and it's going to continue to be a mess until we embrace the issue that they're different. As you point out, there's different types of immigrants. There are immigrants to come to this country to start businesses that have skills that are able, immediately able to contribute. There are others that maybe need more help to succeed in society. And what we have right now is because we have so much dysfunction downtown, we can't have an intelligent conversation. So Peter, this, was, this was done in a political way, not to benefit the economy. Now, you're not a big fan of the president's, but make the case as an economist for what should be done in immigration policy, well, what should strictly be done, on economic What things. should be done on immigration policy is very different than what just happened. We should be focusing on permitting people to immigrate to the United States who have skills that we need, capacities that we lack, and so forth. Instead, he went to, for the votes. Basically, the people that will be naturalized eventually, the dreamers, 
and who want this to happen. So basically, he's saying, I'm going to give work permits to your parents. I'd like to think right. there's room for everyone, Jonathan. I'm going to have to cut you off there, though, because a big lawsuit on Friday, Republicans filing suit, finally found a lawyer who would take the case, Jonathan Turley. Um, and they're filing suit saying the president has overreached specifically on Obamacare. Good news, bad news for businesses. Newsflash from the monkey house. This, <laughs> seriously, this. Wow, this, Jonathan. No, seriously. <laughs> I, on this, I have to agree. Uh, look, no, on but here's the thing. It, a number of things. First of all, this reflects the high-level dysfunction in government because every president makes executive action. So that's the first thing. The second thing is there's no legal outcome that can be achieved by this lawsuit under the Constitution that we have. Peter, your final word on this uh, for business. It all comes down to whether the, the, the four liberals can get Justice Roberts to go with them because the rest of the court's going to vote it on a block. The reality is that for business, this is going to mean more dysfunction and another two more years when it gets something.